Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough of an exercise from Zed Shaw's online book, Learn Python the Hard Way. If you go to his website, learnpythonthehardway.org, you can click on this link, read the free HTML online. That'll take you to the table of contents. And in this video, we're going to be looking at exercise 23, which is called Read Some Code. If you click on that, It'll take you to this one. Now this one's a little different because we're not actually typing any code. We're actually just reading some code that we find online. And he's explaining that we should go to a uh, code repository. So bitbucket.org, github.com, that's the one I use, or gatorius.org, and just search for Python. He says, avoid Python 3, you don't want that. He says, pick a project, click on it, Go to the source tab and find a Python file, .py, but not setup.py. Start at the top, take some notes as you go through. If you see anything that's interesting, write them down for later. And that is our job. So let me show you what I did. I went to GitHub, and um, if you aren't logged in and you go to GitHub, it's going to look like this when you first get there. All right, and, you know, GitHub's a wonderful thing, and you can even download a Mac client. Uh, for it, as well as Windows and other things. But um, let me show you. This is when I'm logged into my GitHub account. See, I'm logged in right there. And what I did is I typed in Python and data. When I search for that, this is what I get. Python data says it's got over 3,000 repositories. And this third one, which is called PyData slash Pandas, I knew it would be a good one because Pandas is a very popular, very powerful uh, data analysis module for uh, Python. And it's one that I want to use, and so I looked that up. This, by the way, is also a good one, but it's more specifically for a variation on Python called IPython. So I ignore that for right now. So I just did this one, pydata.pandas. And when I clicked on it, here's what I got. I got this big, long thing here. Yada, 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 yada. There's a full explanation, it's wonderful stuff. I clicked onto this one, uh, excuse me, scripts. I figured that's where I would find the Python scripts. And then I get a list of scripts and I can see that they're Python files, which is very helpful. Uh, one that looked like it might be interesting is just this one that's called boxplottest.py, because I know what box plots are. And so I clicked on that and I got to this one, and it's just this little short bit of code. It's only 14 lines. But it's stuff that I'm not real familiar with. And um, so what I did is I copied this and I put it into a text editor. Again, you can do this in Text Wrangler or Notepad++. I just happen to use, when I'm writing normal text, I use a program called ByWord. And um, it looks like this. And by the way, the little asterisks here, that's, that's a... Uh, because I'm using a formatting model in ByWord that's called Markdown. It's, it's how you mark bold and stuff, but you, you know, don't worry about that. So anyhow, I copied the instructions down right here. This is the link to the script that I'm looking at. And then I broke it down line by line, and I put here as a comment what I believe each thing does. So I have this one, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I believe that imports the module and saves it as an object called PLT for, you know, plot. And then we have one import random, so that's importing a module. Then this looks like it's importing a module called pandas util testing and saving it as an object titled TM. This is using the object TM and it's specifying, uh, there's our little dot operator, and this is a method or a function for that object uh, that I'm assuming specifies the sample size and it's set as a thousand. Then this is going to make a data frame for our object TM. So we got TM here and the dot operator and then our method or our function and there's the empty parentheses that you need for you need to have the parentheses as a space for arguments even if you don't use any and it's all being assigned there's the assignment operator into an object called DF for data frame. Then we have a line that's importing something called string. I don't know where it's from. Then we take string. There we go, there's string. And we're gonna apply the method letters to it. So we're gonna get letters out of it. And I think this means the first five rows, maybe the first five columns, I can never remember. 
and then we're doing something 200 times. I don't know if we're taking the first five 200 times or if this means 200 rows. I got to learn more about this. But it's saving it as a, it's creating a list. That's a that's a that's a data format. Uh, data frames one kind, the list is another, and it's saving it into an object called foo, which you'll see a billion times in programming foo and bar all the time. Don't know why. And then it looks like I'm doing the same thing and saving it into uh, df, and so that appears to be in the same data frame, but maybe saving it as a variable called indic f or indices or indicator. And then it looks like uh, this one shuffles that object, so puts them in different order, and then saves the shuffled object as a, another variable, I believe, in the same data frame. Okay, this goes to the data frame and creates box plots. That's our an operator here, and this I believe that this means of those two variables, this specifies the font to use, and rotate means I, it's most of the time box plots are drawn vertically by default, and this would rotate them to be horizontal, which makes more sense with side-by-side -side box plots. And then we're using plt, which is the object we created way up at the top when we imported matplotlib.pyplot and saved it as plt. And then we're using the method or the function show. So I'm assuming it's just going to show the box plots. So that's my guess at what it all means. And that is my response to exercise 23 for Zed's uh, Learn Python the Hard Way. I'm sure you picked something else different. And these are educated guesses I have. I'm, I imagine I'll find out that I'm wrong on some of them. Maybe I have some ideas on the others. But I hope you'll, hopefully you found something that was useful. And you will be able to uh, explore some of the possibilities in Python. Anyhow, that's it for exercise 23, and I'll see you around for exercise 24.